What's up, guys? Uh, here with one of my good friends, Gene Bannister. Uh, this is somebody that I have known since high school. It's funny, the last person that we interviewed, Pastor Polo, knew him since high school, known Gene since high school. And uh, I'm really excited to, to have this conversation with him and let you guys listen in. So just a little background, Gene is currently in his final week of his bodybuilding competition. This is your first one? Yeah, first yep. one. First, first bodybuilding one. competition, all natural. All natural. <laughs> yes. All right. And um, so the fact that he's taking the time to, to be here when he's probably like craving calories and stuff like that, we got to truly appreciate it, right? Um, he's also an entrepreneur. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, family man, uh, lover of Christ. And I was actually at his baptism in this church right here. So. Gene, can you tell us how you came to Christ? Like, how did, how did that, you know, I got, to, I got to see the culmination, you know? So how, how did that happen? So to make a very, first of all, how you doing, audience? Thank you. Uh, Sorry, and, we're, on a, we're on a time limit. Yes, that's why I'm, I'm yes, jumping right into it. My exactly. bad, my bad. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, so first off, that's a long story that we're going to make very short. Uh, the first thing I knew in life besides loving family was church. Mm. And now that was under the, uh, the guise of my mother, where, you know, she took the kids to church every Sunday. And that was when I started to love Christ, right? Um, you know, a couple of things happened to where I ended up leaving that church and, you know, had to develop a love and relationship for myself through certain things. And, you know, being in church for so long, you realize, like, this is a great thing, but you have to find uh, what you're really supposed to do with the life that, that God gave you. Uh, so long story short, I uh, found myself here. Um, you know, getting baptized, and it was the first time that I got baptized under the understanding of that this is something that I actually want to do for a reason X, Y, Z, and not because it's just a thing to do. Yeah, that's, and that's what I notice about um, uh, like growing up in the church. I didn't grow up in the church, but many oh, people. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what you trying to say, Gene? What you trying to say? That I am proud of the man you are today. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good save. Good save. <laughs> Don't go searching me on YouTube for my old stuff. Um, but you know, a lot of a lot of times I notice that people who grow up in the church is like first thing they want to do is escape, right? Yeah. Like my my father was a police officer. What what happened to me? Yeah, I turned into yeah. like a, a a super thug. Complete, complete you know? opposite. Yeah. So it, it's awesome though how you made your way back to the church, and I, I was so blessed to be here when you got baptized, and uh, it was it was a really dope Listen, experience. Man, John is John is a great friend. I didn't even like singly invite him it was a post on facebook and he saw and he remembered the date and he somehow made his way over here to support uh as he was definitely on, on his journey and learning to love christ and find out who uh christ wanted him to be in life so i i appreciate that I, you remember i was very shocked but yeah, yeah. very ecstatic to see you and like you say yeah growing up you didn't know that the whole time you you are trying to escape Mm -hmm. because um, not to say that the teachings are wrong or bad, but as you're growing, you know how kids, they have questions, and sometimes just because it says so is not an answer that could bring satisfaction. Yeah. It's like I need to really understand because then now it just becomes a habit and not really a passion. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that as well because that's actually how I, uh, I came to Christ was through asking those type of questions, you know? The questions that somebody, that like a kid would be like, but why? Well, mm -hmm. what do you mean he rose from the dead? Like how does, how does somebody rise from the dead? What do you mean the Bible says this? I came through apologetics, right, you know? Right. For those of you listening that don't know what apologetics is, it's defending the Christian faith, like asking the big questions and actually getting an answer besides Oh, you just got to have faith or right. because the Bible said so, you know, because I wanted to know, well, why, why does the Bible say so? Right. Now I'm at a point where it's like, well, if the Bible says so, like, it's <laughs> it's cool with me. Let's you see, just do see it. how we talk about all the way from. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, since we don't have a lot of time, mm -hmm. I want to know about uh, your company yep. that that you started. Right. You know, we we started doing business together, yep. you and I, a few yep. years ago. Um, and we had a lot of fun, yeah, did a lot of traveling, yep. you know, made a lot of money. Yep. Like we, we yep. had a lot of fun. Le and I think most importantly from that experience, personal development. Yes. Right. Yep. Would you say personal development? Yeah, helped? I would say um, just the things that you learn to kind of get rid of mm -hmm. more so than the things that you learn to obtain. Mm -hmm. I think that was really kind of like a, 
a junking out process, cleaning out an old hard drive or putting in a new hard drive. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it, what it really gave us a lot, a lot Amen. more. Yeah. I learned a lot through yeah. that through mm-hmm. that season. It, it actually opened me up for for Christ. So right. tell yeah. us about your your company. I I, I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but it's Genesis. It's uh, Genesics. Yep. Genesics. Genesics. See? Wrong syllable. It's all right, and it's, <laughs> it's definitely derived from uh, Genesis, just so everyone can know to make it there. Uh, the company initially came to me. In about 2018, 2019, there was a hashtag I was using. It was called Genesic Gene uh, because I was all about, hey, in beginning, a new, right? Beginning, a new, so it was Genesic Gene. Had a conversation with a friend like, man, I think I could really do a brand called Genesic, you know, with Gene and just about the beginning of Gene. It's like, why don't you do Genesics with an X on, a X on the end? And the great thing about that was, you know, obviously it, it is a culmination of me myself but also everyone else uh genetics is for everyone uh it's gene and the number six and you know the thing about it is that six is june which is my birth month but also when you think about the sixth day that's when god created man mm. uh, when we you know part of the world becoming and we, we become new so that's really why genetics was created under that as a, a fitness brand that's for everyone so no matter where you're at in your fitness journey uh, you can start anywhere Interesting, super interesting. I always love uh, learning about brands, especially because I knew there was a, a God yes. undertone. Yes. Mine's pretty obvious. Yeah, God entrepreneur. Uh, uh, absolutely, you know, it's, it's got God. Yes, in it as it should. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I always <clears throat> find it interesting, like Christian entrepreneurs that uh, that incorporate their faith into what it is that they're uh, doing. Yeah, I'm not. Listen, I, I like to think that I'm a very intelligent or capable man, but I'm not that smart mm-hmm. for that come together just the way it did like i'm i'm just not so i'm like wow that definitely had to come from god mm-hmm. and i have to be consistent and see it through uh day by day so that way it could be uh whatever he needs it to be you know yeah. and that's another thing that i notice about christian entrepreneurs who are actually like christians because right. you know you got people who are just using jesus as a yeah. name to make some money right you know but then there's other people like yourself who love jesus uh, you know love the bible and you have a passion for entrepreneurship, so yes. it's like when you when you combine those things together, it's not like uh, it's not like what I call pimp in the gospel. Right, right, right? absolutely. And um, it, it's it's always interesting to me to to hear the story of, of how it all comes together, and also how you're saying like, yeah, I could have never thought of this. Mm-hmm. It's the same experience I had. God entrepreneur, right. I was just driving, and then. God entrepreneur came in my head, and you know I used to be a rapper, right, so right, I'm right. like, oh, yeah. I could I could rhyme that word. God entrepreneur you used to be used to be a rapper. Or? Yeah, yeah, used to be, <laughs> used to be. It might it might pop up again. Yeah, yeah. It might pop up. Yeah. But you know, I I was just thinking, God entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Oh, right. I could I could put that together. R- thought R- nothing. Sixteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thought absolutely nothing of it, and then mm-hmm. like it just kept it kept coming up. See, that's the thing, man. That's what happened, and you get the idea, and like, all right, listen. So just launched the company officially last year in November. But I had shirts and socks probably for about two years. Mm. Now, what was the delay? What was the holdup, right? Last November wasn't my time. I wanted it to be sooner because I'm like, I'm excited. God gave me this idea. I'm going to release it. It's going to be fitness for everyone. It doesn't matter because, you know, God is for everyone, you know. So I, I wanted people to understand that you don't have to be some super athletic freak. You don't have to look, be genetically gifted. You don't have to. Fitness is not just about being shredded and being swole like of course those things are nice where you can see your abs and veins but if you feel good about it mm-hmm. what you're doing right and you know that's the kind of life you want to live you want to serve god and feel good about serving god have that passion and i wanted to you know incorporate fitness into that not incorporate that into fitness but incorporate fitness into that because that's really the bigger playing field god is, is a lot bigger than that you amen know? It was, what's uh, I keep saying what's interesting. Uh, this my third interview. I'll get better at this as we go. Um, but my wife, when when we got together and I started speaking to her about working out, right. she was so worried about like all the wrong things, right? right? right. Like, oh, am I going to get swollen? Mm-hmm. Am I, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? I was like, look, just let me know if you were to work out, what would your goal be, mm-hmm. right? And she's like, I just want to get stronger. Right. And so I just went with that, right? And now, you know, you see her banging out mm-hmm. 10 pull-ups, back-to-back push-ups, e- all that easy. stuff. Easy, yeah. And being fit is so important because it's not just this whole, like, you know, you're, you're moving towards, a, uh, you know, your bodybuilding competition, and we'll mm-hmm. get into that in, in a second. But it's not this, like, oh, yeah, I'm fit to be fit, to, like, right. post shirtless pictures yeah. and, and all that stuff. No, you, the use of your body 
is so important, especially like getting into the habit of working out when you're young. Yeah. So that way when you're older and your doctor's like, look, if you don't start working out, you're going to die. Right, right, you right, you right, know, right. you're already in the process of, of doing it. So it, is, is that something, you know, that, that your brand uh, can bring yeah. light to? You yeah, know? A- absolutely. It's all like just move, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be weights. It doesn't even have to be calisthenics, right? We could do a little run. We could do a little, a little dance. We could play games, but have the games be ramped up. Anything that's going to allow you to be comfortable with moving your body to, be, to feel better. Because you do, look, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm all about body positivity, right? However, when you take care of your body the proper way, you do feel better. There's yeah. just a natural energy that comes with it. Like I was telling um, someone the other day, I was like, listen, if you got a, a certain type of car, you can't put regular unleaded in that car anymore. You got to give it the, uh, what's that, the Supreme? The premium. Premium, yeah. right? So is your body not considered the ultimate sports car or luxury car? Why not put premium gas inside there? Mm. And not even just from like the food and nutrients, but again, to go back to the whole mental switch that it would take, as we were saying, how we got a lot of personal development from our business ventures together. We take a combination of those premium things and put that inside, then how are you able to perform? Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that uh, because it's easier to put the, the regular unleaded, uh, right? It's, a, it's lazy, it's cheaper. And it's right? everywhere. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> Bro, when I had the, the BMW, the 650, yep. right? I had the, first off, it was an eight-cylinder twin turbo and it like ate gas like how I eat chicken fingers, right? right? And it, it, I always had to put Supreme in it, right? And there came a point in time where I had the BMW, but I was bad with my money and my bills were super high. And I'm like, dang, I wish I could put un- regular unleaded. But when right. you do that, it mm-hmm. damages something that is that is of, of that value, exactly. you know? Yep. So the same thing... Uh, you know, to piggyback off what you're saying, you know, the the more positive stuff, the more good stuff that you put in your mind, that you put in your heart, reading the Bible every single day, you know, and then add your physical fitness onto that. It's like just great to be well-rounded and you feel Absolutely. so much better. Yeah. So, you know, when you said, you know, I'm all about body positivity, I think we need to be positive about making changes and stop accepting people as like, yeah. I understand that most that many people do have a struggle. You right, know, right, some right. people are heavy, naturally heavier. Yep. I'm naturally skinny. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. But but this whole like, I'm gonna have uh, body positivity, and you and if you say anything about yeah, yeah. and anything about it, you're wrong. It's like no, we just care about your but health. Then imagine someone like me that may have friends like that, right? If that person is in the hospital, or God forbid, even worse. Sometimes people look at the closest people to them. How could I be one of the closest people to them? And some of the best shape of my life, pretty much almost 90% of the time in shape. And I not have a serious conversation about that if we're talking about body positivity, right? Because I can accept someone being bigger than I am, being bigger than a normal person. But there is a certain health guideline that comes with that. And your doctors tell you and you feel it. So you can't, you know, lie to yourself about that. Just, you know, overshadowing it as, as body positivity. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. I feel like that that label body positivity is yeah. just like under underlying it is lazy. I just yeah. want to be lazy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I I um I think about older people, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's easier to be like obese when you're younger. Mm-hmm. But once you're older and like, bro, I'm thirty seven, yeah. my back hurts. <laughs> I couldn't imagine if I had a whole right. hundred extra yeah. pounds on, on me. Of, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um so on, along this lines, right now mm-hmm. you're moving towards this this bodybuilding competition, yes. your first one ever, yes. right? Uh, what is your what's your reason for doing that? So it's man, everything is kind of like in the three year time frame for me, right? Moved to Connecticut about three years ago, married about three years ago. My son just turned three. The original idea of genetics was given me to me three years ago. I decided to legitimately uh, bodybuild three years ago, Mm. right? In between those three years, we all went through COVID, right? So what does COVID put on hold? COVID puts on hold probably really celebrating my son's first birthday. Also with that, it puts on hold the very first bodybuilding competition I was supposed to do. Mm. It puts on hold the launch of genetics, right? And the reason why I'm saying all of that is because it, it built up so much patience 
and life. Even though, even though I believe I'm a very patient person, people always say that. But the reasoning was I did want to continue to build up patience, uh, discipline, and push myself to a, a level that I've never been to before. And it was funny. Uh, younger, I always said, hey, man, I want to work out like a bodybuilder. Kind of look like them, but I don't want to bodybuild. Mm -hmm. And what sense does that make? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to go to church, but I ain't going to give to Christ at all. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to help build up the building that allows me to go there and read my Bible there with mm -hmm. those people, right? So how could I go to the gym, want to work out like that, eat like that, and not participate? It, so it's for me in my fitness journey, what are you missing? Where can you go now from here? It's like, oh, duh, just at that last thing. And I wanted to, wanted to really challenge myself. Um, and I'm grateful for my wife and my son uh, for their sacrifice with time. Because as you know, just yeah. like how you're doing this right now, you're not with your wife. You know, you're taking away time from your family. But the return has to be greater. So yeah. now when we get to Saturday, it's not just the fact that I got on stage. It's like, babe, here's my return for all the time you allow me to spend in the gym. Yeah, Carter, look, this is what your father's been working on. You know what I mean? So now when you release this interview, your wife is like, oh, wow. Okay, I'm glad, hopefully, <laughs> that you took the time <laughs> to do this interview because, you know, I enjoyed it or whatever that may be. Yeah. You know? now, my wife is super supportive, right. you know, and, and she understands. And, and she's, you know, my wife is a, a, a killer. She's yeah, a yeah, hard yeah. worker. Yes, like yes. always, she can't stay still for I two seconds. I love that for you. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm the same yep, way. Yep. So it's like we got to schedule our time together. Oh, it's, yeah. it's so crazy. But what you're saying is is – it's like you're inspiring the people around you you know mm -hmm. it's like going to the gym like just so you guys know you do not have to be a bodybuilder to you, go to the gym no you, you know not. you you can you just don't. go to the gym right right but to have your family like watching you and then see you on stage right. and and know how many meals you had to eat know how many calories you had to cut know yeah. that you got to drink that you got to take the diuretics you know yeah, and, yeah. And, oh, like man. Yeah. yeah it's 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 a whole whole mess yeah. right culminating to this one to it's, this one because again it's not just yeah me the single person up there but it's not just me mm -hmm. it's me my wife my son everyone that supported throughout the time that asked questions that said oh no I, you know i know you can't do this i know you can't eat that you know for me i feel like once i'm up there i'm gonna have all those things with me which is you know i was telling um pastor joel like i had a an emotional moment earlier today uh, as being my, you know, my final week of, you know, hopefully my first of, uh, of many or others. And it's like, wow, like we're here. Yeah. A couple of days away and just being grateful. Like I'm sincerely grateful that I get to work out. Not that I have to work out, but mm -hmm. that I get to work out. I'm grateful that I have the money to be able to actually support this as well too. There's so many things that comes with it because I'm putting the money over here but I'm still able to provide for the household as well, too, and nothing's lacking there. And it's such a sense of uh, appreciate, uh, being appreciative and being grateful. Uh, some people can't work out. Yeah. Actually can't move. Physically. Yeah, physically. They want to, and they can't. I don't take it for granted. Every time I walk through the gym doors and I'm able to lift the weight, it sounds funny, but I'm like, thank God. Mm. I'm able to challenge myself. Like, I'm grateful, you know? That's that's bars right there. Uh, but m my wife and I say the same thing. Like there's sometimes you just don't want to go. Right. Right. And like we got to remind ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, we we literally have the ability to even just move our fingers, our man. toes, our, our, our heads. I don't our, know if you saw you that know? Instagram rant. I kind of went on a couple of weeks yeah, I ago. It. I just was like, hey, yeah, I just want to let y'all know. I thank God that I woke up. I could see. I could hear. I could move my fingers and my toes. And I said, if you're grateful, just DM me. Let me know because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful. It, I, actually, that's the prayers that I say when I wake up. <laughs> yeah. I, I say, God, thank you for waking me up. Thank yeah. you for the eyes to see, the hands, the feel, the feet to walk. Like yeah. all these little simple things. Mm -hmm. My wife says, like, you know, the ability to even feed yourself. But, but brother, there's is, nothing simple about that. Simply waking up is a miracle. Yo, that's a fact. It's a miracle. A like how? I don't get yep. it still. You can when, tell me all the science you want. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I get that. But. It's still mind blowing. Yeah, you know. What's interesting is when I was uh, when I was coming to faith and trying to like figure things out, and I was I was thinking about uh, I was studying um, 
first life, you know, right. like when they talk about evolution, like whether you believe in evolution or not, like mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there, but the first life, like, like creating life from nothing, <laughs> like, like life coming into existence. Mm -hmm. Right. And the argument is, yeah, well, it's simple life, but there's no such thing as simple, simple life. Like simple. even cells, like right. a, a single cell is one the of the most complex. Yeah. yeah. Come on now. Come on. It's, it's and, a, and I'm not good at science. I don't yeah, know Yeah. Yeah. I'd just be digging into it. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it is cause I care about truth. Right. Right. You right. Know? So when somebody says, Oh, Christianity is not true because of evolution. I'm like, yeah, but what, about, like, what about the first life? Yeah, you know, but even if it, but people say that, but everyone that digs into this, I haven't seen one historian that could deny the fact that Jesus was a real man. Mm -hmm. So let's just start there. If that's Believe the me, they're out there. I've I've, like, I've bumped into not is, not credible. Right. Because right, so yeah, I've seen yeah, the yeah. real credible ones say, hey, the one thing I can't deny is that Jesus was, in fact, a man that was yep. here. Now it's like you got to figure out what to do with that. Right. 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 Like, but if that's the baseline, I'll, I'll take it from there. Whatever. Yep. <laughs> that's what brought me to it, too, because I used to think that Jesus didn't exist. Right. Like he was just a, a myth. Right. right. And then when I dug into it. And I, I saw how much evidence there was for not only his existence, mm -hmm. but, but for the disciples believing that yeah, they saw him the after he rose. Yeah, no, oh, mm. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, no, nah, I got it. I took a, a whole lot of time digging into that. That's actually what brought me to, to my faith right. was after I researched all this stuff, I'm like, oh, I think Jesus is who he says he is. <laughs> like, whole bugged out, bugged uh, out situation. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. I think he is as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm sure uh, Pastor Polo thinks yes, so. Too. most definitely. You think so? Yeah, 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 all yeah. right. So just to, to wrap this up, you know, how do you balance all of this? Because, you know, faith, family, and, wow. and fitness. Like, wow. how do you do that? What's up, guys? Just wanted to talk to you real quick. So I had originally intended to leave the extended versions of these conversations or interviews whatever we're going to call them i was originally going to just have them be on patreon for patreon supporters and have just little clips of these interviews for free on youtube but after some praying and some thinking i decided against that and the reason that i decided against that is because i don't know which part of these conversations somebody needs to hear i don't know which part you need to hear and if patreon becomes like a wall that keeps you from hearing the part that you need to hear that just it just doesn't sit well with me so they're just going to be free on youtube for anybody to hear the full versions if you do want to support us on patreon truly appreciate it the youtube algorithms don't pay the bills so any little bit helps with that being said i hope that you enjoy the rest of this conversation god bless man god is so strategic he prepared me for that question i didn't even know why that was on my mind for like mm -hmm. two weeks about balance there is no such thing as balance i'm gonna tell you why i listened to a podcast and i heard somebody say something and it clicked for me right do you really balance jesus in your life no nah. right he's, he's the he's head everywhere. of your life he's yeah, yeah. everywhere right your family, right? How do you balance your wife? You can't really say, baby, I'm balancing you this week. Mm. Right? How do you balance your fitness? The same way you balance the hospital bills when you don't take care of it? Mm. And what I heard, what finally clicked for me, and I hope this clicks for you and everyone else, is that you learn how to have those things live in harmony. Mm. Because when you try to balance, those other things actually take a hit. But if you can find a way to have it live in harmony, it all works together. If you think about a great group that can sing right when do they sound their best when they harmonize mm. you're not taking away anything from any of them they're all able to be at their strong point and deliver to that end goal which is have a perfect sound now i'm not saying that if you do those three, three things in harmony you have a perfect life but i promise you it could be a lot better mm. well i think on that note <laughs> I don't know where we could go from here. Cause that was uh, that was bars right well, there. Well, thank you, thank so, you. So, Gene, I just want to say thank you so much for for coming out and and taking your time with me. I know you got to get right back into it. You got to <laughs> yes. eat. You got to sleep. You got to yes. do all this yes. stuff. But uh, if you could pray us out, yes. Be great. Before before I yeah, do yeah, the, the prayer, I'm, I just want to say I'm extremely humbled and and, and grateful and appreciative uh, that you're sitting here taking time out of your day to interview me, uh, because just like everyone else, I'm just a regular human being. Uh, trying to get better day by day. So I appreciate you taking the time to show some interest in the little things I have to say. Of course. All right. Uh, Father God, we thank you for our brother John uh, making it here safely. We thank you for the wisdom that you give him as he searches for you daily and for the lives that he's able to touch. Uh, we thank you for the platform that he has and it continues to build in the name of you. We thank you for allowing us to be here with him and have this fellowship. We ask that you always, always, always make sure that our heart and mind stay on you 
and their lives to lead the way and continue to be the light. And for everyone that's watching that they may have heard one word, if anything, that could spark something in them that will have them seek after you and seek after something that's better for them with you in their life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, Gene. Appreciate you.